What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to do something a little bit different today, something we've never done. We're going to do a reaction video. We're going to be reacting to videos that were sent to me by viewers of the channel that want to see and hear what I think about these videos. So without further ado, the first video we're going to react to is called Cover Trim by Ornamental Decorative Millwork. And I've seen the video. It's, it's, it's a tough one, but we're going to we're gonna tackle this together. So let's get right into it. When we moved into our new studio space, we aim to keep the updates to a minimum. The element we always change is our moldings. This time, we wanted to try something completely new. Cover trim from Ornamental does exactly what its name implies. It covers over existing trim. That's right, very little to no demo required for an instantaneous update to any space. Now, when I first seen this, I was like, okay, I get it. I get the concept. It's there. It's a unique idea. The idea is that you could just cover your trim. It's called cover trim without taking it off, without doing any tear out. So I was like, yeah, that actually would work. You know, if you had plinth blocks at your casings, you had something to die into. I was like, this is a good idea. However, as I progressively watched the video, I saw this idea just painstakingly crumble right before my eyes. So let's keep going. First, you want to locate any areas where base molding meets with door casing or ends at a solid surface. These are the locations where you will. Problem number one, why are you bringing out the oscillating tool? I would much rather just pop that base off than bring out an oscillating tool. Oscillating tool is annoying, loud, throws dust. It's it's, you gotta make straight cuts with it. It's hard to make straight cuts because you're holding it. Even if you have a straight edge, it just wobbles around so much. To make a straight edge with the oscillating tool to have a seam join together is not something I would prefer to do. I would rather tear the base out. It's so much easier than trying to make a cut with this tool. And anyone who's used an oscillating tool could tell you it's not like a fine precision cutting tool. It's just a tool where you need to take something off when you don't want to take the whole piece out. But if you're taking the whole piece out anyways, the whole idea is to get rid of what you're cutting. Don't bring this tool out. Let's keep going. Prep for installation of transition blocks. These blocks are very thick. And now when he said transition blocks, I was like, okay, maybe this is like crown molding corner blocks. You know, those, those blocks you put in the corner where you have the crown die into it because you don't want to make compound miter cuts. Okay, I, I see where you're going with that. Those, those blocks have a reveal. You know, they have an architectural detail to them. They kind of make sense. I'm not a fan of them, but I get where they're going with them. This one, you'll see, is, is not that at all. Like I said, the more you watch this, the more it hurts. Ensure that the inner profile covering your existing trim is never seen once the new trim is installed. All right, I'll pause right there. So this right here, when I first saw this image, it looked like a plinth block. And I was like, okay, what, what's going on here? And it had me thinking like, okay, this idea would work with a plinth block. So instead of cutting your base with an oscillating tool, you would just cut your casing with an oscillating tool. Again, not preferred, but if we're going with this idea, that's, that'd be the better idea. To cut your casing, put a big plinth block in there, then have this cover trim run into it. Once your transition blocks are in place, decide where you will start your installation, measure your distance, and cut the cover trim. All right, let me stop it right here. This is just a pet peeve of mine. I made a video on this a couple months ago. When people cross their arms at the miter saw, it's, it's very dangerous. In that video that I made, I had several carpenters chiming in down in the comment section about how, yes, you are absolutely right. You are not supposed to cross your arms at the miter saw. People had the blade come at them and hit them in a tendon and cut their muscles and stuff. It's just, it's just bad. So I just got to stop and point that out. I know we're not really, you know, talking about that. We're talking about the trim, but every time I see that, I just kind of cringe like, don't cross your arms at the miter saw. It's just, it's just asking for trouble. For any inside or outside corners, you will want to cut the cover trim at a 45 degree angle. So all pieces meet seamlessly. And this brings back memories right here too because we used to cut a ton of MDF molding without any dust extraction. Probably knocked off a good five or 10 years off of our life, but we soon learned like, man, I can't breathe as good. I wonder if it has anything to do with that cancer board. And we, we eventually started using dust collection, 
using our vacuum and then we kind of have gotten away from MDF altogether now for the most part, as much as we can. But yeah, this just brings back memories. Seeing You can smell it through the screen. It's crazy. And don't worry if there's any gap. You can use caulk to fill that later. Moldings are most commonly installed using a pneumatic or battery powered 18 gauge brad nailer. We always recommend longer brad nails between an inch and a half and two inches when installing trim. Continue your process until all of your existing base molding has been covered with your new cover trim. Once your installation is complete, it's time to fill your holes with wood putty. All right, let's pause right there. This just looks horrible. If you look on the far end over there on the left side, you've got a seam that's clearly visible. On the far end near the base of that cabinet, near that toe kick, you've got a horrible seam that is just screaming for attention. Those are not, that's not a good look. This here looks like you just pieced this together using scraps. The idea makes sense, but the way they're going about doing it is, it just doesn't. Caulk all of your seams, and once everything is dry, you can sand your moldings smooth to the surface to prepare for paint. Pause it right there. Look at that transition. <laughs> Man, that is rough. Like you've got, you got the bottom of that piece kicked in, the top kicked out. It's just bad. And especially if you brush over that, it's going to catch all that paint and cause it to drip down. Just don't get it. Like what you, you're creating so much more work for yourself. That thing's going to have to be sanded like crazy. It's unnecessary roughness. I would have much rather just popped that base off, came back with a one by six and just went on with my life. Like this is over engineered to the point where it just hurts your mind. Cover trim comes pre-primed and paint ready. The final step is painting your cover trim twice using a nice clean angled brush. Yeah, look, they didn't even sand it either. That, that's rough. That is rough. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, I'm speechless. I'm speechless about this one. That is a horrible idea. Who comes up with this stuff? This is ridiculous, man. I'm starting to get, I'm, I was, first I was, at first I thought this was funny, now I'm starting to get mad. Allow it ample dry time, and then style your space and enjoy the transformation. All right, and so the video ends with this before and after image. And I gotta admit, the after clearly looks better. I mean, it's all done. They did like the wallpaper, they did the new trim, they painted, they freshened it up with the new backsplash, new cabinetry. It's better. But this is one of those things that you'll hear me say where something looks good from far, but when you get up close to it, it's far from good. And this is kind of like the Pinterest. You know, oh look, before and after. It's like, yeah, it, it looks good from this angle and from this distance, but when you get up close to it and you actually get to experience the craftsmanship when you're in the space physically, then you get a real feel for like, whoa, this is freaking rough. Like this is, this needs to be redone. And that's exactly what's going on here. So yeah, that's, cover trim is a complete two thumbs down for me. It's a complete fail. I would not recommend that at all. I don't know who they're trying to target with that. I don't know anyone in their right mind who would look at a, a task before you and say, hey, you can either just pop this off, take this molding off, and then put new molding on, or you can cut with an oscillating tool, measure this little block, measure from that block, put this board up against that block, sand that block, make sure it's all sanded. It's like, just no, just I'll just pop the base off. So there you have it, guys. There's my reaction to cover trim. I've got some other videos lined up to react to. If you guys enjoyed this, let me know down in the comment section below and we'll do some more reactions. Also, if you have any videos you want me to react to, feel free to send them my way as well. I'm not just trying to react to bad stuff. I mean, send me good stuff too, like skilled carpentry stuff, stuff that's beyond my skill level even, like I'm not the best out there. And I just wanna look at this stuff, spread the news, spread the words, just give my opinion on what I see happening in the industry and just what I see happening and amongst other tradesmen out there in the field. So we're gonna wrap it up for this one right there. Please leave me some feedback on this one. I really appreciate it. Other than that, we'll catch you guys on the next video.